Wake that ass up early in the morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ MV Angela Yee, Charlamagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. We got a special guest in the building. Yes, sir. Steve Stout. What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up, Stout? So Congratulations, man. First of all, man. thank you. Thank you very much. I feel, I love. I, I feel like home when I come here. Yeah, honestly. yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, like I've, this whole thing is played out. Well, first of all, my career is played out in front of you guys. Mm-hmm. This is uh, you're in the business, but more importantly, or just as important, um, United Masters and the idea, um, specifically on this show, has played out. And shit, that was rude. And we're in New York City, man. Mm-hmm. Right. We're in the studio. We, Absolutely. We, we out in these streets. It feels yeah. good. Feels good, especially feels good after the pandemic. In. Yeah. It feels good to be out back in New York. It's raining today, but the last couple of days was sunny. And it's all very beautiful. But, but if York. you wonder why we're saying congratulations, it's because uh, United Masters uh, got a $50 million investment from Apple. Yeah, so break that down. Explain that. Where does the money go? Who eats off of that? Do the artists get it? How, how does it happen? First, thank you. There's claps that's going to come on. Yeah, there's good applause. Yeah, absolutely. Claps, absolutely. Applause, applause, all, all that. You and all food, that bombs, all that. Oh, but, but I just got to say this before I get into that, man. Coming out in this building mm-hmm. felt great. But, like, they gave me the COVID test downstairs. Right. I, I already had the COVID uh, 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 vaccination. Mm-hmm. So I've already got two, and it's old in 14 days. And it made me realize, like, when you come into buildings or whatever, if you already got vaccinated, how would anybody know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're not gonna know. And one of our clients, we just got Claire. The uh, they use it at the airports. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like they have a vaccination passport, so that no matter where you go, people would know that you're vaccinated. Mm -hmm. And it's gonna be needed in buildings because when kids go back to college campuses or going into arenas, you want to know if the person is vaccinated. Like I. I seen it today. I'm like, I just got the thing. Why are they doing this to me? Yeah, I see a lot of uh, GOP. The Republicans are saying that they think uh, they're going to make it to where you have to have vaccine passports to vote. That's what they're trying to drum up now. Well, f- I forget all that stupid shit. I'm talking about just the fact that I couldn't come to the Breakfast Club. Yeah, and I had to do that again. And then they, there was a ni- another layer, which was crazy. They want to do a colonoscopy. The anal swab? <laughs> they, do, they, 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 they tried to do, so they tried to do the anal swab with you? Why are you getting so excited? No, I know they offer it, but I didn't know. They don't offer it here. He's not playing, man. Stop it. You know, we're the only show here. There's no other show in the building. I can tell, man. Not mornings, nights, afternoons. We're the only ones that said this is what we want to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's because our show thrives off this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Energy. Yeah. You know, it's we got to have the energy. You got to have the interaction. I think my office, we're opening up our offices next week in Brooklyn. Uh, I thrive off of this as well. All right. Creativity thrives off of Absolutely. interaction, mm-hmm. man. You miss simple things like uh, winking at somebody and mm-hmm. shit. Yeah, and get, hand, like, adapt. Yeah, like anything. Adapt, yeah. Yeah. adapt, wink, like those types of things. I don't like how you deflected from the $50 million investment. I'm not deflected from the 50 I'm going to go back to the 50 Okay. <laughs> no, no, I'm not paid to talk about the 50 What are you talking about? Um, well, the first thing it does is, you know, it validates my vision. Mm-hmm. You know, when I was saying this three, four years ago, People gave me the benefit of the doubt because of my career or whatever, but maybe I was bugging, mm-hmm. right? Maybe I was the guy that was past his prime that was bugging. Mm-hmm. A little bit of that, you know, you never know. Right. Never that, but whatever. Um, and then, like, we broke NLE Chopper, and then we're like, okay, maybe, maybe, and what does it mean, and what does a distribution company mean? Mm-hmm. Then we talked about how the distribution of value. Mm-hmm. Those who bring the most value should take the most out of it. If technology is really working at its finest, it redistributes the value chain. Mm -hmm. And the person, the author of the work, should get a lion's share of the revenue. Mm -hmm. And that's what a distribution company does. Mm -hmm. It allows the artists to not sign their rights away, uh, in music specifically. And um, they don't have to sign their rights away and still get the benefit and the value of, of distribution. At United Masters, we added more than just distribution, brand partnerships, mm-hmm. uh, partnerships with TikTok and the NBA and ESPN, which has been well documented. So the $50 million in the investment and in partnership from Apple, not only validates the vision, but it also says to every independent artist around the world that you the playing field is not level. Mm-hmm. You don't have to sign to a major label to get the same opportunities as them. It's an option, but it's not the only option. Mm-hmm. And this is the option, this is what I've been you know, sort of wanting to happen for many, many years. So I'm extremely proud uh, to be here and talk about it today and and to be able to offer that service to independent artists all around the world. So How most did independent, it happen? Most independent artists, I was okay. going to say, 
the reason they don't want to go independent because they always feel that a bigger label will give them the promotion they need. Yeah. Will pay for, you know, get the radio, the record spending on radio, yeah. help traveling, help tour. So with yeah. this money, are you saying now that money is for the same thing? They'll be oh, able yeah, to get well, the same well, promotion, the same radio, the same uh, touring, the same, all that help that a bigger mm-hmm. label would. So there's a lot of things that bigger labels are supposed to do. Correct. They do it for the artists who make it. Mm-hmm. And a lot of artists that don't make it don't have that. The most important thing for an artist today, and I think the most important thing for every creator mm-hmm. today, is the way they use their social media tools. Um, back in the day, if you were recording artists, you had to sign to a record deal. You had to sign to a record deal before you found an audience, mm-hmm. right? So, oh, I got a deal. Oh, now I found an audience. You actually find your audience today before you find a record company anyway. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So why are you signing away the rights to that? They already, you don't need the record company guy to close his eyes and say, that's a hit. The fans already told you it's a hit. Mm-hmm. You already put the song out. You already shared a snippet of it or whatever it may be. The value needs to be redistributed, and, and, and it has been. Mm-hmm. So yes, the $50 million is to invest further in technology. Mm-hmm. I believe the, the modern day music company, um, the record company in your pocket, which we are at United Masses, that's our North Star, that's what we are building, and is you need to have the tech edge. So when everybody's talking about NFTs and blockchain and all of the different things that you that are unlocked because of technology, the first thing you have to do is own it. Mm-hmm. The second thing you need is somebody to help you mine it, mm-hmm. right? We have that and in further investing in that. And then there's talent. Executive talent as well as uh, artist talent, which is what you're talking about, right? Which is, you know, helping artists promote themselves and be able to, 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 to really grow in their career and level up. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's exciting to be able to offer that. Um, we didn't, you know, we, we have obviously getting $50 million is a great thing, but more importantly than the $50 million is when you have, it's apples, at, you know, you're talking about a $2 trillion thing behind that. The, mm-hmm. the $50 million is the amoosh boosh. It's more infrastructure. <laughs> mm-hmm. No, the amoosh boosh. What is, I don't know. That's, that's just rich like shit. A, no, that, that is a, no, it's just a, that's the appetizer. Got you. It just get you in the door. <laughs> Got you. They must serve that in St. Bart's. You serve it everywhere, bro. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> so where does the 50 million go, though? Like, how is it distributed? I mean, there's thousands of artists out there. Millions. No, well, no, 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 no. I'm just saying, no. The $50 million goes to the company. Okay. We use it and deploy it, again, against international growth, hiring great technology, engineers, product people. So it's over Data scientists. Yeah, it's for infrastructure. Okay, it's, it's, got you. It's infrastructure, it's growth. It, I'm a CEO. I use it however I want. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Take mm-hmm. it to St. Bart's. Go fishing, whatever. Yeah. Don't say that. People will believe you. But like, oh, Steve Stout says he's going to take, gonna take the album money and go fishing. At least five percent, definitely, he's taking. Yeah. It. But what? So no, how does, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but how how does it benefit the artist directly? I guess because I know it's artists listening. It does help the uh, well, the infrastructure. If you if the infrastructure of anything that you are a partner with, the better the infrastructure, the better it is for you as an artist. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's that's a very important thing. I don't want to to, to skip over that lightly. When I think every artist is walking around today and they all got a manager. And the, the manager was something that came out the modern day um, um, you know, record business because, you know, you were going to do tours. And mm-hmm. when they started to commercialize music in the 50s, you needed a, a manager, an artist, you're going to go to all that stuff. I think today an artist could have a manager. I think that's, that's still a value. But I think an artist needs a chief technology officer. Mm. If you don't have a technology person in your camp, how are you going to take advantage of all of this stuff? That mm-hmm. everybody's, Cause your manager read about it. That ain't enough. Mm-hmm. Like you need a plug in. You need to really figure out how you're going to get this thing done. Um, and you know, as you guys, uh, for example, have com- tremendously uh, gr- grown in your career and gotten other businesses, you realize the power of having infrastructure. Mm-hmm. You just can't like say, Oh, my man's going to do it. How yeah. would you get all these companies off mm-hmm. if your man was doing it? Mm-hmm. You need infrastructure. Absolutely. Correct. And that's what this is all about. Artists need the tech infrastructure in order to get all this stuff done. Cause that's where everything is going is, is, is to, if you're the owner and you're the, uh, the, the proven owner, the authenticated owner, how do you get it, take advantage of all of the different higher margin value 
problems that technology is unlocking. And you could sit there and be like, I don't care about that as long as my shit's streaming. But if you really want to get that bread, That's you'll right. actually start to understand all that stuff. I'm glad you said that because you got these people who be on YouTube and they be on, you know, just different social media platforms and they're screaming about 100% ownership, 100% ownership. But y'all don't own that. There's no infrastructure there. Well, if they own it 100%, they own it. But what do they own? It, well, you could you could own something and not know how to take full advantage of it. True right? indeed. Right? Yes. So the idea that they own it is the right thing to yell out. Mm -hmm. The next step is what are you going to do about it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? It's like a lot of people say, I got my company incorporated. <laughs> okay. And, <laughs> <laughs> Shout and out to it? LLC Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> and you're going to do what now? <laughs> you know, Jim Jones was, was talking about, I seen him say something about, you know, all these artists talking about they own their masters. He did say that. But what does it really mean? You know, what do you say to artists that say, I want to own my masters, but they don't know how to monetize it. You know, you just have it. It's not in the day where you had reels and you had these big things to own and put in the safe. It's all digital. So what do you say to these people? That you say, say that, that, so that's a great question. And I thought Jim Jones' question was absolutely correct. Um, when he made it a physical item, it kind of went to the left to me. Mm -hmm. Because it doesn't make a difference if you own the physical item. As long as you own the intellectual property outright, mm -hmm. um, then anytime anyone licenses it, they got to call you. Mm -hmm. If it's a video game, if it's a movie mm -hmm. sync, if it's anything, whatever it is, they got to call you prior You'd own your music, or you thought you owned your music because you made it. You could even have the reel in your possession. It don't matter. They wasn't calling you. They was calling Universal. They was calling Def Jam. They wasn't calling you. All of a sudden, you would see your... I was speaking to Joe Button about this the other day. He was like, my song was in a video game. I had no idea. Mm -hmm. Guess what? It's not in your business. You don't own it. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's not in your business, mm -hmm. man. You be thinking like, damn, don't they got to call me? No. You didn't read the fine print? Mm -hmm. Instagram owns your photos. That's right. That's what you signed up for. It's in the terms of service, mm -hmm. right? So these are things that you don't even realize because the physical version of it is, in your mind, it's in the real world, it's like, I have the physical version of it, it's mine. I have possession of it. It doesn't mean shit. They own it. Yeah, I wonder about that even with, like, YouTube, though, right? Like, we post all this content on YouTube. What does the fine print in YouTube say? How do we know that they don't have a stake in our, our videos? When you we can look at all the terms of service. I, I knew in the beginning, man, when I first got, and I would say this and people would look at me like I was crazy. I'm like, the Internet came in no directions. Mm -hmm. When I first got Facebook, I was looking at something. I'm like, I'm not posting anything. I've, I've never been on, on Facebook ever. Mm -hmm. And I've never, you know, posted an open up account. And I was just like... This is weird from the standpoint of this is the first I've never seen my dad with another woman outside of my mom. I've never seen that. Mm -hmm. There's a generation that's going to see their mom and dad entire <laughs> partying in Cancun, Miami, twerking on police cars and then telling them, you got to get to school on time. Did you eat your oatmeal? Like. Because those things are never going to be erased, mm -hmm. right? So you're going to see for the first time a generation growing up looking at their parents like part of being a great parent <laughs> is honestly not telling the shit that you did all the way fully because <laughs> you don't want the kid to get it like twisted. Like mm -hmm. you went through certain circumstance and if they just got a snapshot of it, it wouldn't really tell the whole story. Mm -hmm. Well, guess what? An entire generation's story is going to be told that's right. right now. Mm -hmm. And the kids are looking at it going, Dad, Mom, what's up with that? And that's not even Dad. <laughs> that's not even Dad. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's going to be hard because they're going to be like, you're going to be trying to tell me, don't do as I do, do as I say. I'm like, please. Mm -hmm. You're crazy, man. You, that's weed in your mouth. I've seen that. Word. <laughs> and what's on that on the tip of your nose? Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, listen, y'all did a <laughs> United Masters did a deal with TikTok, uh, the NBA, now Apple. How important are strategic partnerships? Oh, strategic partnerships, is, it's what it's all about. Having strategic partners is, it's how, you, um, it's how you accelerate. Because what happens is you could build everything and that costs a lot of money and takes a lot of time. Or you can get strategic partnerships and they accelerate um, your advancement. So having TikTok as a partner where people can 
upload their sounds to TikTok and then, boom, distribute right to United Masses from TikTok is very, very important. Be It's it's a great service to TikTok uh, artists, people who submit sounds to TikTok subscribers. It also gets us a lot of artists with to come to our platform, right? Mm-hmm. Um, ESPN and the NBA are great partners because they have decided that they want to be on this on discovery. They want new and what's next. They want to invest in new artists. They think that new artists and the artists and the communities that they affect are important music and they want to be able to help support them. So having those guys as partners so that those artists' songs are in the, you know, Steph Curry shooting shots and LeBron mm-hmm. Duncan, et cetera, or, or, Hila, or Stephen A. Smith's first take and having that, that's all important stuff. So it allows artists' music to be discovered Mm-hmm. in different areas other than just memes and, and all of the other things that are, are, are more typical today um, on social media and what have you. So what does Apple get out of You can't wait for radio. Deal? I mean, forget that part. Mm-hmm. No. So, so No. No. What does Apple radio. get out of the deal? Apple gives you $50 million. What do they want in return? You know, the best thing about Apple is that they come from a standpoint from day one they believe in artists and creators. Mm-hmm. They want artists and creators to do just that. Mm-hmm. That you, you may not be good at a lot of other things and you shouldn't have that occupy your time. You should focus on what you do really well. If you're a creative, if you're an artist, that's what they want. And they wanted us, they, they, part of the partnership I, was because A, we aligned on those values and B, if they can invest in us and we can build the infrastructure to make it frictionless for the artists to just be able to create, put their music up right through the phone, get it out, mm-hmm. see the data, where am I? Where should I tour, how can I sell my merchandise, and keep giving them the tech edge so that the artists can just create, that's the vision of the partnership. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and they believe in that, and that's the reason why they chose us. Gotcha. Wow. You know, I, I, you, you brought up radio, right? And I wonder about that because I, I know for a fact, I don't think programming works. Generic programming, how you can program a song and play it a hundred times a week and make people like it. Do, no. you, do, you, do you think you can spend enough money to make someone like an artist, even with United Masters getting 50 million? No, I think that was a, that was a, I, I, there's songs that I know I hate that I know when they come on. I'm like, why do I know this song so well? Programming. I mean, brainwash. Um, a lot of Backstreet Boys songs I shouldn't have in my head. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. it's like, why are you here? Um, and even before that, like, even growing up, the Hall and Oates, and that, like, why do I know? But it was always in our radio. You cut it on, our parents' car, this, that, and the third, or watching MTV, and you just, like, you're waiting for the one um, uh, uh, Scarface, you know, uh, video, and then you got to go through, like, Britney Spears, mm-hmm. NSYNC, da-da-da, da-da-da, bang. Then all of a sudden you get... Ghetto Boys. Mm-hmm. And you're waiting for for it. And that's why you know these songs. But it's mm-hmm. not because you really liked them. Mm-hmm. But you became familiar with them because that image was pounded in your head. The truth of the matter is that is uh, uh, marketing. Marketing can do that. Marketing can be very effective in showing you images or, or putting sounds in your head over a period of time. It doesn't make you like it. It certainly makes you acknowledge it or have an instant reaction to it when it cuts on. Mm-hmm. That's just how the human mind works. Mm-hmm. Um, and anyhow, no, those days are over with, right? Uh, we have choice. We don't have to watch the bad show waiting for the get the beginning of the great show. Mm-hmm. You know, those things that you, you had mm-hmm. to do back in the days or, or watch the end of some stupid video just to wait for the beginning of the video you loved, which caused uh, pollution of the brain, mm-hmm. of <laughs> things you don't like. No, you can't do that anymore. Um, But what I do believe happens is that artists, podcasts, creators, it becomes narrow and really, really deep. So narrow being, you don't have, the audience doesn't have to be this wide. It can be this small. You can have 700,000 people, but who love you. Mm -hmm. And because they love you, they want more of you. Mm -hmm. They want to buy the shirt. They Mm want to buy the NFT. They want to buy the ticket. So it's not about, oh, we sold 10 million records, we're the broadest. No, we sold 800,000 units, and we're the deepest. They love us, right? And it's, it's more artists creating those communities of narrow and deep engagement that I believe is the future of the record business, but the future of 
the podcast business, the creative business, this whole idea of we're really, really big is less important than we are actually really tight Absolutely. with the people who love us. You know, I want to ask, you know, you see all these records being broken in music now, right? Is it fair? Have some more coffee, if you don't mind. More coffee. It, the reason I ask is it fair is because, you know, you see a lot of these people streaming records and they're streaming millions and now all of a sudden they're coming out three, four million. But is it fair because if you're on a playlist, you might not want that record, but you're working out and it just automatically goes back mm-hmm. to, you know, let's say an artist like Jay-Z where you had to physically go to buy his record. Yeah. So is it fair for a lot of these artists that are breaking these records that they kind of win off of just circumstance? That's a great question. You're on a playlist. The playlister decided that you should be there. And all of a sudden, you're song number seven. Um, and it works within a nice groove. And I guess the idea is if people keep listening to that playlist, then they, the assumption is that that song is necessary to that playlist. I guess. Um, it, it does provide exposure, mm-hmm. um, but it certainly doesn't have, at least in that form, the purpose. Now, if you obviously go to a song and type it in search, that's the equivalent today of what you have done right. with Jay-Z. Uh, b- to buy an album or a single or whatever. No. Well, yeah. It, I mean, no. it doesn't... Well, the, look... Getting in get, a car to go to a store, to I, walk I, listen, in a record store. <laughs> I, 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 I Listen, I agree with that, but I can't sit there and say that, that it doesn't mean that you wouldn't have done it if you had to do it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, going in the search bar, I, I can't tell by the way you type a name in search, which is the person that typed it in. That means they would have gone the extra mile mm-hmm. versus the person who just typed it because mm-hmm. they don't give a shit. Mm-hmm. There's no way to measure that. Um, so you just hope that if they typed it in, that their intent is they want it right. by mm-hmm. any means necessary. Mm-hmm. That's the assumption. So, yeah, no, you, you can benefit from playlists. It's not a bad thing. It's just an, another way of getting exposure. I mean, back in radio, when radio mattered the most, you know, there were songs on the radio that, you're listening to the radio and then the song came on. Mm-hmm. It doesn't mean that you love the artist. That, that was the original point. And you heard it, but you were waiting for something else. And you, they were just, uh, you were, they were an innocent victims. But when you heard it, that wasn't a sale that got you 10 million. Like all these records are being broken like crazy. Like before yeah. I, did, I remember there was only a handful of artists that went diamond and they had to do a lot to go diamond. Yeah. Now it seems like, oh, you got a nice single, you, you want a, a couple of great playlists, you can go diamond. I don't know if they're going diamond like that. I mean, it's a lot of different, you know, the, the golden. How about this? Let's just <clears throat> let's reset this. Yep. Golden platinum, what it means today, is much different than what it was before. I agree. Mm-hmm. That, that's right. Whoever made up the idea of gold and platinum, five hundred thousand albums was gold, a million was platinum, ten million was diamond. Mm-hmm. Right in the physical, somebody decided to make up streaming equivalents. They just made that up. (laughs) It's like, you know, 1,000 streams equals one equivalent of a purchase or something like that. Right. 1,600 streams equals one per. It's like, who came up with that? Right. That's not, that's like some complete fake voters' laws that somebody just makes up. Like, oh, no, well, you know, that district right there. They have to vote between the hours of three and six, so that's it. Right. It's like somebody just makes that up. Right, right, right. It's just some fake thing. It doesn't. It's not real. Um, yeah, that's how I even feel like when you see Drake break a record, like you know, one, two, three on Billboard. It's like, what does that mean? We have no AC on, so there's no AC. Oh, okay. That's, that's why cool. it's so freaking hot in here. It's cool. It's cool. I mean, you can cool. take off the expensive take, Louis Vuitton. No, 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 no. I'm, break I'm keeping the Louis but, the LV on. But it, it's the hot coffee, too, though. Yeah. yeah. But what did that mean when Drake's one, two, and three on Billboard? What it means is that um, those three songs that particular week were streamed and people aggressively, you know, went to go listen to it. And uh, Screams can be manipulated. And I'm mean, not taking nothing away from Drake. We know he's the biggest thing in the world, but screams can be manipulated. Radio can be manipulated. You get that right seven days. Frequency. Everything can be manipulated. Record, records, you know, things back in the day was mm-hmm. being manipulated, right? People were scanning records twice. Every manipulation is unfortunately, mm-hmm. you know, it's like uh, it's baked into the equation mm-hmm. nonstop. The fact that things can be manipulated. Um, however, the fact that it's one, two, and three is because people chose it that week, and 
and and it happened to beat everything else that week. It, if your question is like, well, why? <laughs> yeah, I just wonder how you get. I, I just wonder how you gauge culture because a lot of times what you see on those charts nowadays, or even as you said to the gold and platinums, it don't really reflect what's actually happening. I, it never did. I, I don't think. Look, it, it, I wrote it in the book, The Tanning of America. I, I I talked about this. Like the Billboard charts, they were always they always figured out a way to manipulate it. It was always weighted between sales mm -hmm. and radio. Mm -hmm. And there was a period where sales, the formula was first sales. And then all of a sudden, rap records were selling like crazy. But that meant that if the top 40 chart, if they just used sales heavy, then all of a sudden, um, uh, Juvenile would have been number one. And then they're like, wait a minute, we can't do that. Because if Juvenile's number one and John Cougar Mellencamp's number 10, then all of the deals that we have because of the Billboard charts, like there's a guy named Casey Kasem that used to do America's Top. He would have to say, Juvenile, number one, back that thing up. And it was everywhere. Mm -hmm. And they're like, whoa, 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 whoa. Let's change it and re-engineer re, re the formula so that it's more about radio play. We did, so when they went back to radio play, then John Cougar Mellencamp came in number one, and it went back into an order in which they felt comfortable with. So manipulating and moving the rules has always been, it's an omnipresent thing. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, Hot 97, not uh, the, 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 uh, the radio station in New York, Z100. Man, they wouldn't play a rap record. To get a rap record on that station under any circumstances was the most ridiculous feat of all time. Why? During our day, because they had a big footprint, and they were like, we're going to play records, rap records sparingly because they didn't believe that their audience wanted rap records when obviously they wanted rap music, mm -hmm. you know? And that's a manipulation because somebody believes that, not mm -hmm. because they know that. There was no data to support that other than somebody's belief. And unfortunately, unfortunately for them, they did not move forward with time. That's and right. now the people decide what they want to listen to, when they want to listen to it, how they want to listen to it. Um, and those charts, whether it be Billboard or the Grammys or whatever it may be, are antiquated. We still have some affection for them because when we grew up in the business, they made a deep impression on us that they matter. But they're obviously mattering less and less and I less agree. and less. I agree wholeheartedly. That was going to ask, too, you know, what are, what is your thoughts on labels now. And the reason I ask that now is because during the pandemic, you see most labels have been closed. They realize they don't need a lot of the staff that they had before to get things moving. Yeah. They don't need the building. They don't need the brick and mortar spot. So what happens to labels now? Um, <clears throat> I think labels now are going to start to, to morph into different... Um, I think they need to morph into different types of uh, services relying on the idea that I can pay you a bunch of money up front and you sign your rights to me and we're cool now, it's not going to work. The <laughs> artists are too smart. Um, they don't need that. And uh, I said on this show that you know, labels provide bank loans that are usury terms. Mm -hmm. And usury is against the law, right? If, if it was a loan, um, but th th it's structured differently than a loan, but it really is a loan. I'm going to give you an advance against yourself, and we'll see if you can earn that advance back under these terms that are favorable to me. And artists ain't going for it no more. So they're going to have to shift and morph into something else, and I think that's exactly what's going to happen. I know with the, uh, the Apple deal, it's letting artists maintain full ownership over their work while expanding their economic opportunities. What are those, what are those economic opportunities? Well, that's what technology is providing right now. Mm -hmm. isn't it? It's... It's using music. It's the same way you guys use. Uh, I'm sorry. I, I'm I'm proud of you. So I keep saying you guys because mm -hmm. um, I talked about you guys <laughs> becoming like the next Howard Stern and all that. And you're gonna blow through all of that. I mean, that was almost. I mean, I said that. And I remember your face was like really. And I'm like, that's how I felt. And it's obvious. I mean, what's going on is just ridiculous. Um, and I'm super proud. Thank you. But this is your equivalent of streaming, right? It gets you the attention, and then you find higher margin items, Very right? True. So the businesses, you're in flipping homes, and 
that, that like that's a you using this as a way to get into a higher margin game mm-hmm. for you to build other businesses and that's other opportunities. So when I talk with whether we talk about NFTs or uh, being able to sell merch directly to your fans in one click, you know, allowing the artist to take the streams to uh, um, identify an audience and then find higher margin ways to monetize that audience. That's why you don't have to be that big. Mm-hmm. All you got to do is be tight with the people who love you. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's, that's the, I mean, that's the business of fandom, right? Mm-hmm. No, you know, it's very mm-hmm. true because it's like, you know, even up here, like, like say somebody, an artist like Rod Wave, we had Rod Wave on last week. Mm-hmm. Interview does great on YouTube. Radio's not playing none of Rod Wave records, but Rod Wave about to have the number one album in the country yeah, this week. 137,000 units. That's just, that baffles me. Like, like if I was a, a program director or something, I'd be playing Rod Wave just because. They would. By, by the way, that was happening back in the days with hip hop. Like, we we knew an album was coming out, and it was a big deal to us, and we'd go run out and buy it. But it wasn't being played on the radio at all. Mm-hmm. We it was probably being played on, you know, uh, uh, Funkmaster Flex or something like that, and you thought that was everything. Mm-hmm. You know, it was a Clue tape and Flex playing it. You're like, man, it's everywhere. No, it's not everywhere. It's <laughs> It's everywhere in your, within your small life, yeah, yeah. right? Right, yeah. but yet it would sell big numbers, you know. But it really wasn't everywhere, um, because there's a Rod Wave. Guy, he's on that wave right now. Mm-hmm. Like people know that. Oh, Rod Wave is dropping, and he, he's he's tied into the pulse. It's social media. Mm-hmm. It's um, definitely tons of social media, word of mouth, and just like people are, are following him, and they don't need radio to determine if the shit is hot or even inform them when it's coming out. Mm-hmm. They know. Mm-hmm. Are you still doing um, the brand specialist stuff with the Knicks? Or that, or is that oh, yeah. No, no. That's, that's done? Gone? No, no. Absolutely. We work with Knicks, Madison Square Garden. What's going on with the marketing. Knicks in the organization now, man? What's, what, what, what's happening? Are, are we looking forward to anything positive? Or the... Oh, positive, man. The Knicks are great. They're doing good. They're doing better than good, man. They, good. I mean, what what Leon has done over there as a leader and and West, they've done an amazing job. I mean, it's when the fans come back, it's going to be amazing. The, the the energy in the garden, mm-hmm. and they're playing not only in Coach Tibbs. Not only are they um, they're winning, but the the way they're playing these games, like the mm-hmm. they're in every game, they're playing hard. They're playing New York basketball. That shit is dope. Yeah, but they got to treat the, they got the organization got to or the building the garden got to stop treating the veterans like shit. Yeah, they did. You saw what they did to Charles Oakley. You saw Patrick Ewing Patrick complain. Ewing, come on, day. Ewing. Like, why? They don't know who Ewing is. His jersey's in the rafters. I, I, I mean, I don't run security, man. But you're the marketing. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, that's I not, good, sec- I mean, not good marketing to treat the veterans I, I, like. I, I, I think that those things need to be you know dealt with and looked at. But I, I don't run marketing. I mm-hmm. mean, uh, security. How do you think uh, technology? will change the economics for the artist. Because we're talking about the technology, but like you said, what what are the missing pieces that could really help them open up all these different economic opportunities? Well, the first and foremost thing that you got to do is you got to own it. Mm-hmm. Because all of the technology is going to be ways to, A, authenticate the ownership and then allow the owner to sell fractions of a song allow the owner to sell duplicates of the song. Um, that's what blockchain technology is all about. Th- that, that's the most important factor, uh, a breakthrough thing for intellectual property owners is blockchain because it allows you to create a, a smart contract from the owner and everything else is that replicates of it are clearly duplicates. So for instance, if you have a photo on Instagram like every other version of that photo on Instagram, those would be copies, and you would actually be the authenticated owner. Mm-hmm. Right now, no one knows who owns the, the photo. Mm-hmm. And whether you're a model, whether you're a visual artist, whether you're a recording artist, you want to maximize the value that you can have because you've owned something, because you, you wrote a joke, you, you, you took that photo, you are in that photo, you own that copyright. And... That's the advances that are coming because of blockchain. It's what blockchain is doing is going to be as dramatic as what the internet's done. What blockchain's going to do for intellectual property owners is going to be the equivalent of what the internet's done 
to open our eyes to access to information. Expound on that a little bit more. What is it? Yeah, break it down for people that don't understand, like myself. What it's going to do is allows... Right now, if you own something, mm -hmm. um, there's no clear... There's no clear indicator of who owns it and how you could sell fractions of it. Own something it's, digitally. Or you just all digital, anything. yes. Okay. Digital. And you can sell fractions of it. It's you, you just can't do it. It's like, this is the owner, and then like, I have to give the whole thing to you, and now you own it, right? Or you, or you bought it from me, mm -hmm. and now you have it physically. With NFTs and blockchain, you can actually create agreements in which you can own 3% of it, 2% of it. You can actually create opportunities where the owner can have contracts that go forward forever in perpetuity. So for instance, an artist, visual artist, you paint this uh, picture, whatever, and you sell it to a gallery and they get it for $5,000. They sell it for a million dollars. You only got the $5,000. Mm -hmm. That's how the visual artist game is tough, tough. You mm -hmm. think music is bad. Like they'll take the, they'll paint a picture, gallery takes it, sells it for $5 million, a million dollars, whatever. They still only get, they don't get any of the money as it goes. They can now create with blockchain where they get paid in perpetuity every time that piece of art changes hands. You can create smart contracts with intellectual property that you couldn't do before prior mm -hmm. because of blockchain. I'm trying to make it that simple right. um, because it's easy for me to understand it and explain it that way. And I don't want to say anything and go out there like, oh, Steve thinks he's the tech guy. I just know for a fact that um, day in and day out, I'm surrounded by engineers who are absolutely telling us the value of why we should get into this quick. You look at this thing, NBA Top Shop, are you seeing any of this stuff? These these digital images that are trading it. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm not getting mesmerized, and I'm not going to look at it from the outside and go, damn, that's crazy. That's bugging out. Oh, you know, I'm not paying attention to that. That shit isn't. No, it does affect you. Ah, that's Bitcoin. No, you wish you bought Bitcoin. <laughs> Fuck that. We got to, I'm not, not we have to. Technology can be of a very, very, uh, serve a very deep purpose for us mm -hmm. and create a lot of value for us if we embrace it and have people that explain it in an interface. That's why I said artists need CTOs. They need technology folks around them mm -hmm. um, or platforms that explain this to them because there's a lot of value then. And if you don't have access to it, you'll just look at it and go, that's not for me. Mm -hmm. No, it is. It's actually specifically for you. Mm -hmm. I wonder what independence looks like to Steve Stout in 2021. Uh, independence next year, this year. Um, I, the independent music business is the fastest grown aspect of the music business. It's the fastest growing segment of artists. The, you know, this idea of that, like, oh, the big artists are here and the small artists are here. The big artists are now becoming, getting, grabbing less market share mm -hmm. and it's becoming distributed much more um, down the line, right? So when you talk about Rod Wave, for instance, a Rod Wave is an artist typically that would have been like here maybe before, like down here. Mm -hmm. Like, these artists are coming from nowhere very, very fast and mm -hmm. accelerating very quickly and are capturing market share. I think if Rod Wave was independent or not, Rod Wave could be independent. He'd still get that same back. He'd actually get more money if he was, happened to be independent. Independent artists are going to grow and are growing faster than artists that were big artists that were signed or are signed to record companies the volume of independent artists are growing faster. And I just think that it's gonna to continue to go that way uh, for the next few years. And platforms like ours and others will be um, very critical in, in solving that issue. Record companies are trying to buy those things now. Mm -hmm. I'm definitely taking this off. <laughs> uh, record companies are trying to buy, well they are. Sony just bought AWOL. Mm -hmm. I mean, Sony bought a company called Artists Without a Label. <laughs> I mean, Sony Music, pull this up, mm -hmm. paid $400 million to buy a company called Artists Without a Label, AWOL, A-W-A-O. So, guy names a company, we don't want a label. 
And then Sony says, that's a great idea, and buys it. They, they're they morphing into adding on those services. They see it's growing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You see what's up right there, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 These are real the crazy things. The thing is, when I Google this, the first thing that come up is all United Masters stuff. Oh. <laughs> it's because I'm here. <laughs> it's target. So is it the same thing? Is that's what Sony's doing? That's an investment strategic partnership with oh, they, AWOL? They, it's the same they, thing? They, well, they bought it. Okay. Well, now those artists that thought they had no label, they got, they got one. Label. <laughs> so what's the point of Sony doing that? Is it that whole thing? Market where they... share. Market okay, share. Got you, got you, market got you. share. That's the other thing we don't talk about. Market share, market share, market share. I want more market share. Everybody wants market share. So if they have to buy, that's why when you see this kid like, oh my God, they paid, you know, all this money for this artist. Mm-hmm. Why did they pay them $10 million? Well, they wanted to buy the market share. They wanted to buy market share. $10 million, $8 million, $9 million. The guy just put out his first song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. but I don't want this thing to go without me. Bidding wars for what? Because I want to buy market share. And if you're an artist and you can get one of these guys on the other end who's sitting there going, I don't know what this is, but I'm going to pay $10 million because I want market share. And you take the money. I wish you stayed independent, but you know what? Get the bag. Mm Mm-hmm. NLE Chopper took the bag. Great. We moved, obviously moved on, but like he got paid $8 million and honestly he was much better with us. He was at least different, unique, and special and do. And like he gets to the label, he turns into another little ba 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 Right? And but he got the bag. Labels will pay tons of money for market share and they believe that that's their way of keeping the the industry thing going. Mm-hmm. But I don't think that that, I think that idea is going to be broken up in 2021, just to get back to, to, to answering your question. Mm-hmm. So so when it comes to the 100% independently Damn, owned, modern, no, it's hot in here. It's hot in this motherfucker, man. Uh, you gotta, you, that's why you have the Rock Nation hat on. <laughs> so soak up no, I, I, I got the Rock Nation hat on because the logo means something to me. The paper plane, you know, the, 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 you dream to imagine, mm-hmm. you know, that's, I, it means something. Like I got the Rock Nation, motherfucker. Oh, that's the United Masters Rock that's Nation. A, yeah, this, is a, this is a United Masters Rock Nation. Yeah, 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 yeah. I just hit it real quick on you. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think? What do you think about whole strategic partnerships with with Louis, LVMH and? Oh my God. Yeah. That's just, square. Forget it. I mean, you think about that, man. Um. He has a son. His son, Sir Carter, mm-hmm. is going to, you know, in 16 years, fly and go to Paris and have meetings with the French about his company. Mm-hmm. And they're gonna, he's going to walk into LVMH, the greatest luxury company in the world, and have a board meeting about his company, and they're going to call him Sir Carter. Sit down, Sir Carter. I mean, this is how far... You talk about paper planes, I mean... This is happening. This that's definitely happening. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. These are these are very very important things, um, and that's how I feel about it all. Like I feel like we've all are contributing to shaping um, the dreams and the imaginations of the next generation. We are laying down footsteps. No matter what we do, people are staring at us. They're watching every one of our moves, and we have to lead by example. There's a lot of shit we can do. But the most important thing we have to do is take the responsibility of teaching people, leading well, innovating, and providing hope. That's our jobs. We, we, that's the privilege we all got to see, be in the seats that we're in right now. Well, you, you see social media. You see backlash when these people, Swiss and Tim, do they deal with Trilla. Hove does his deals. And everybody's like, oh, they're guys are sellouts. Black people can never keep anything to themselves. They're misinformed, people. They're misinformed. Look, people are incentivized to talk shit because it creates followers and havoc and, oh, my God, I can't believe you said that. That's, ew. Mm -hmm. Nigga, that's stupid. (laughs) (laughs) That don't matter. You know, and probably when I was 17, I would have said some stupid shit if it was going to get attention. You know, Mm -hmm. let's throw a rock at that window. Why? Because this shit is dope. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that was an idea. That mm-hmm. was a legitimate, stupid mm-hmm. idea, right? That <laughs> that I was a part of. So, um, I was. It's like the, these things. You gotta be patient with it. Um, and I don't think you should buy into it. 
I don't really like to read the comments because I don't think it's really about how they feel. I think what gets attention. We're in an, an attention economy right now, and people will set themselves on fire to get attention. That's right. So as a result of that, I don't really trust what they say versus what they really mean. Mm -hmm. I think people look at Hove and Swiss's Trilla deal and whatever, and what I'm doing or whatever it may be, and go, wow, these guys are growing and they're doing this, that, and the third. Um, and for somebody to write haters' comments on it because uh, it makes them feel good that day and somebody at the day said, I can't believe you talked to Swiss like that. Mm -hmm. Yo, you tough. It's crazy. It's stupid. And it don't matter. Um, and in fact, what you are doing is spreading negative, a negativity that is misinformed to people and, and hurting the actual idea of what Swiss did, hurting the idea of what Hove did, because you are doing the opposite. You're saying, don't do that, follow me. What are you doing? Right. Yeah, what are you doing? What yeah. are you doing? Yeah. Let's follow you, what are you doing? Yeah. And I think when people see uh, y'all do these deals, the first thing they think is, a white person is in control now. Yeah, well, that's Steve doesn't true. have any control. Well, Jay don't have no control. Yeah, well, Swiss you, Tim don't have no control. I, I can tell you, those are all non-facts. Nobody's playing that. Nobody's walk. Nobody's walking in the game in these rooms cooning for nobody. Nobody. I could. I'm, I'm. I'm telling you that right now. Nobody's walking in these rooms cooning. Yo, I'm just happy to be here, sir. Fuck that. No one's doing none of that. None of that. I have not done that at all. And no one's doing that right now. And th I'm not saying that there wasn't a time where that was on the table. It's not happening at all. You know you're not doing that. Mm -hmm. You're not doing that. No one's doing that. Yeah. Why would you do that? Mm -hmm. You really, you have the confidence in knowing that you got the information. You have the confidence in knowing that you're the one that's that's bringing the, 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 the activity to the table. You have something that we could definitely work together with. But you're not running the show mm -hmm. at all, mm -hmm. you know? And this is like pre-Black Lives Matter movement. This was happening. You know, Black Lives Matter movement even emphasized why it's more important. Mm -hmm. right? But this was pre-Black Lives Matter. Like, what are you talking about? We're not, we're not doing that. We're not doing none of that. So um, I just wish that more young people or even haters would choose other subjects to hate on but don't hate on entrepreneurs who are leading by example and make it seem like like we're not really moving things forward that would make just from a business perspective there's so many things you know i speak more about voter suppression that's taking place in georgia right now mm -hmm. and how they're trying to change those laws in front of our face really get into that what ken chenault and, and ken frazier talked about uh, uh released yesterday around shit like that definitely everybody should stand up but like a Swiss's Triller deal and he could, could be a sellout or whatever. I mean, that that's just stupid as yeah. hell. <laughs> you know what it is too, though? The good brother Dame Dash. It was actually the Breakfast Club interview. I think when he came up here and he said... I, I guarantee, yo, I wrote down that I thought you would bring up Dame Dash. What's that? Well, it's not in reference to you, but... Oh, every time I come in, Dame Dash's name comes but up. No, but it, and, I th and you usually bring it up. No, no, because no, usually it's something, a conversation that we've had and <laughs> I just asked your opinion on it, but... Yeah, but it's not about you. It's the fact that Dame said, if you don't put your own money up, you're not the boss. Right. And I think that's kind of stuck with people since that interview. Yeah, but they all did put their money up. Let, let's say there's a part of that. There's an That's true 90% of the time. Fox. But they did put up their own money. You know how long Jay's been building Ace of Spades? Jeez, over and, 10 years. And the money this man yeah. has put in that company to keep that thing going? Swiss had verses. I mean, he, he battled Kanye at Summer Jam. Summer Jam. But even with the, the, the idea of that is something that he's been thinking about for 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 years. And it's cultural cachet too. And it, during the pandemic, it was the greatest entertain. It was the Michael Jordan documentary and verses. That's right. Be nice. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Those are the only two things you was doing. You were watching the Last Dance or verses. Mm -hmm. And the fact that they've turned that into a franchise now, Peloton partnerships and NFL partnerships and. How do we not say that's we they we we watch them do that? It makes it should make you go, 
What's my idea? How can I hustle? Right. I watched this shit happen right before my face. It wasn't some super difficult thing that I could never imagine. Mm -hmm. It was hard work and consistency and timing. And I can do that. That's what you're supposed to do, be inspired, not hate. That's crazy. Swiss is awesome. And the fact that Swiss and Timlin did it together. That's great. And give an artist that performed Come on, and give them and then give them That's equity. Right. Are you kidding me, man? These guys are awesome. So what's next for United Masters? More growth, global growth, more opportunities for independent artists. Um just dominate this space. I, I just think that we are in pole position to do what we need to do to make independent artists feel like they can be the same uh, as far as stardom is concerned and opportunities as an artist that's signed to a major label. And as long as I'm running it, um, I'm gonna make sure that that remains the case. My marketing and eight, my marketing agency, I mean, our work is just can't even be, I don't even wanna, it's like, <laughs> it's just so, um, I'm so proud of the, I think we have the best creative people in the world. I, I think I have the best creative writers, designers in the world at Translation right now. Um, so I'm proud of that and I just, like, I'm always happy to come up on the show and talk about it because I'm a kid from Queens, five colleges in two years, didn't graduate shit, mm -hmm. and I put it all together and now could sit here and say at 50 years old that I have a partnership with Apple. Wow. Um, and you've known me um, for 25, 26 years. You've watched me come up and do it. And, and it's brick by brick. There's no, like, he went away to Afghanistan and came back and all of a sudden. Right. No, it's right in front of your face. Nas, this beef thing. 50 got mad at him. Dame Dash don't like him. This, that. Puff, champagne bottle. What does that mean? Bam, advertising. AI, Jada Kiss. Oh, shit. McDonald's, this nigga's crazy. He's seen it. United Masters, he's bugging. Apple, yeah, give it up to that man. Mm -hmm. Like that's mm -hmm. how I feel. Mm -hmm. Like and every, I want everybody to know that. I want everybody to be a part of that. I don't want anybody to feel like there's something about that that they can't do. Just have irrational belief in yourself. Have irrational persistence and irrational understanding of perfection. Mm -hmm. You need those three things. Just this irrational belief that no one can tell you that you can't do something. This irrational belief that you're going to persevere no matter what. And once you bring that irrational attitude towards the thing that you love, you will be successful. All right. You said as long as you're running it too. That mean you plan on selling? No, no, just that's part of the. Okay, that's just the just statement. Asking. As long as I'm running it, yeah. just, not yet anyway. Yeah, it just, it's just like that's how you supposed to say that. That's yeah, yeah. yeah. Steve you know, Stout, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. You you have more? Um, I was gonna ask like, are you gonna stand next to another artist? Cause we haven't seen you do that since NLE Chopper. Um, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm standing next to another artist. I'm standing next to Toby Nguawi. I always okay. mess up his name. Toby Nigwe. Toby Nigwe. Toby Nigwe. I, I fucked up his last name. No, I know I fucked up his last name. It's on. He he posted it yesterday. No, nah, Toby Nigwe. I'm standing next to him. He's okay. great. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, 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 shit. Try Jesus, not me, because I throw hands. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like yeah, I'm, uh, Toby's a, an, a, is an amazing talent. He released songs with us for three years in a row every week. Wow. He's the definition of irrational belief and persistence. So um, there are certain artists, uh, I personally love their music and I will stand next to them. Um, and there'll be more, there, mm -hmm. there's gonna be a lot more, man. This is, you know, the, 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 the Spanish artist, Alex Quinn, sing his ass off, love him. New artist we just signed, G uh, Gavin, I think he's dope. So there's a lot of artists that I that we have that I personally love their music and I stand behind, but we, we have a great team of people. So mm -hmm. it's not like anything like that, you know, I but I personally have my favorites that I, I like to work with. Got you. Well, thank you for joining Steve us. Stout. Steve Stout. Well, thank you, guys. Thank you for having me. All right, it's the All Breakfast right. Club of Steve Stout.